McDaniels, seatbelt. Oh, great contest. McDaniels got a piece of it. McDaniels the swap. Driving on McDaniels. Oh, get that out of here. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Utility Sports. Really excited for this video as we dive into Jaden McDaniels, who is one of the most special and versatile young players in the NBA. Very excited for more of these types of videos to be coming on the channel. So if this is something you do enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more. And let's get into Jaden McDaniels here, who I think should be a lock to be an all defense team member this season in the NBA based on his lockdown defensive prowess that he's really excelled in this year and something that before the season, I had some concerns about if he was going to take that next step forward from being a defensive playmaker to a guy who can actually consistently sit down in a stance, make the other team's best player work, especially after uh, their big trade for Rudy Gobert. I thought there was going to be a lot of pressure on McDaniels to be the go-to perimeter defender, and that's played out this way throughout the year in the 77 games he's played of the 80 games uh, the Timberwolves have had up to this point at the time I'm recording this. Jaden McDaniels has been fantastic pretty much night in night out on that end of the floor and we're going to break down everything that's gone into him being an all defensive team member in my eyes this year starting with some data of course that's always important to look at a lot of the voters are going to consider that I'm going to give you some on off splits uh, when he doesn't play when he does how good the Timberwolves are with or without him. Uh, we're going to also look at some of his actual contest ratings, uh, defensive field goal percentage allowed, some of the most important ones to consider. Then we're also going to just look at the actual footage of him as a player, which is going to be playing throughout this uh, video as well. We're going to look at the stocks, uh, which is steals plus blocks. We're going to look at the versatility that he shows, obviously someone who steals and blocks the basketball. There's already some versatility there, but I'm talking more so his role uh, and how he helps the Minnesota Timberwolves end possession, specifically on the defensive end of the court. And then I've got a little segment called seatbelt, which I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit of an affectionate term there for what Jaden McDaniels has become for the Minnesota Timberwolves. So let's go ahead and jump into it here with some of that data that's very important to look at. And here's his actual ratings defensively this year and how many field goal attempts he's allowing as the closest defender in these situations. I want to focus, first of all, in that second category, two-pointers. In the 77 games played, he is allowing about 8.3 two-point shots per game, which is around 49.7% uh, efficiency for opponents shooting two pointers against McDaniels as the closest defender you're going to notice within six feet of the hoop they're shooting less than 56 percent less than 10 feet away from the hoop they're shooting a little bit under 54 percent and overall they're shooting only about 46 percent from the field and you're going to notice five three pointers a game allowed and now this is one of the big blemishes on his mark as a defensive player 39.4 percent from three allowed, which is a very high mark. But I do want to point out that most times players that are being guarded by Jaden McDaniels are in fact settling for three point attempts with nearly 33, 34% of their attempts coming from that range, actually a little bit higher than that um, even, it's about 35 to 38%, somewhere in that mark. So McDaniels is doing a good job cutting guys off, forcing three point attempts. And it does look like, yes, they are going in this year at a pretty decent margin. But everywhere else, they're not going in uh, at a very good rate. You might say, well, 56% with less than six feet, that doesn't sound bad. Let's compare that to some league averages, specifically here, less than 10 feet. The best team in the league is the Memphis Grizzlies in this component. Obviously, Jaron Jackson Jr., who is probably going to be the defensive player of the year, gets some love and credit for this. Well, <laughs> that team, the best defensive team in the league, uh, in terms of a ton of metrics, allows 56% inside of 10 feet uh, shooting at the rim. Again, Jaden McDaniels is better than that at 55.8%, which goes to show that, hey, this is a very, very good individual defender when he's the closest guy guarding in that range. You look at the other teams on this list in those areas too. Brooklyn, they have obviously Nick Claxton, another defensive player of the year candidate. The Milwaukee Bucks with Brooke Lopez, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Do I need to say more? Cleveland with Jared Allen, Evan Mobley. And then Utah, obviously, Walker Kessler has been such a great young player for them this year. He obviously goes a long way 
with his block rate into affecting those numbers within 10 feet of the hoop. Uh, obviously, within six feet, he's even better. But my, my point is pretty clear here, right, that Jane McDaniels defensively within 10 feet is remarkable. And then we go on to the two-point shots. And, well, let's look at that here. Remember, he was right around the same percentage points again uh, as some of the best teams in the league. Milwaukee, 51.2%. Uh, Brooklyn 51.8 he's again right around these numbers which goes to show that inside the arc he's been one of the best defenders individually in the NBA when you stack him up comparatively to other NBA teams specifically the best defensive NBA teams in the league Jaden McDaniels is still someone who stands out with his defensive prowess in terms of some of the data that I've already shown you. And I think another good one to look at the defensive rating with and without in the three games that the Minnesota Timberwolves have not had Jaden McDaniels, their defensive rating skyrockets and their defense falls apart completely, which we'll talk about a little bit more later on as to why that happens. But you'll see 114.1 defensive rating with Jaden McDaniels in the lineup that's about standard in the NBA and in the three games he has not played 124 defensive rating which means that on average per 100 possessions they give up about 10 more points per 100 possessions which is brutal that is a massive difference that's basically the difference from being uh, the best defensive rating in the team the, the best defensive team in the league arguably to being where the Houston Rockets have been the last two years. Uh, it's the difference between being a top defensive team and the difference between uh, that and being the worst defensive team in the league and, and picking top five in the NBA draft. It's just the reality. Jaden McDaniels has that much of an impact on the defensive rating. He's been a huge part of Minnesota's success when they found some. This year, obviously, McDaniels has taken a big step forward offensively. That's not what this video is about. But defensively, he's been so key and pivotal for them. And we'll get into that a little bit more later on. But also another interesting piece of data here of the top 24 trios in terms of minutes played this year. So, you know, you look at trios like DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, Nick Vucevic. That is a trio that has played a lot of minutes together this season. You could go on and on down the list. J uh, you know, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, uh, Al Horford, for example, another example that would be on here. Of the top 24 trios in terms of minutes, McDaniels, Ant, and Gobert rank number one in defensive rating at 108.8 defensive rating, which is very, very good. Of course, McDaniels right at the forefront of that, Ant and Gobert as well. Uh, that's really the, the key defensive trio for Minnesota. Those are the three guys that I think are really going to hold down that defense for the next three, four, five years. Uh, depending on Gobert's longevity. But Jaden McDaniels is the outside perimeter, number one defender, night in, night out. And in Minnesota, he's done it around a lot of other bad defenders. Carl Anthony Towns is a, a very bad defender when he's on the court. D'Angelo Russell is a huge negative defensively, and obviously his time in Minnesota, uh, I think, showcased that a ton. Jalen Noel is not a big positive defender. Uh, Mike Conley is a better one. I think that Torian Prince is a solid team defender as well as Kyle Anderson, which is when I think Minnesota is at their best. When they're playing five guys who can switch, defend, go out in space and cover. And I, I think that for the most part, Minnesota, I think they've leaned into that a little bit more as of late. But uh, Jaden McDaniels is really the guy that I think is the engine behind a lot of that with his role on the team which is what we're going to talk about here going forward, specifically stocks. And I think the one big thing about Jaden McDaniels, he presents so much length and size that I, I do think it just catches some teams off guard, honestly. Throughout this video, you're going to be seeing clips where Jaden McDaniels is stealing passes that you think, where was this guy throwing it to? And to be honest, my expectation is, well, that guy didn't think that Jaden McDaniels was going to be able to steal that ball. Or all of a sudden, the guy's going to try and challenge him at the rim, and, well, they get surprised that Jaden McDaniels is the guy elevating and blocking that shot and sending it into the first row uh, or out into a spot where it's going to be a transition play for the Minnesota Timberwolves. <clears throat> Jaden McDaniels has done a lot of really nice things for Minnesota this year with his length, size, uh, defensive prowess. That was one big thing at Washington uh, when I scouted him 
coming into the draft for the Huskies as I was so impressed with his ability to make plays defensively, which is specifically what stocks are. Stocks are not a great indication of, well, this guy's the best defender in the league or he isn't. Obviously, Jaden McDaniels does not lead the league in stocks. You know, he's only averaging 0.9 steals per game and one block per game, but he has some of the most emphatic blocks and steals in the NBA, specifically because he's got a great amount of athleticism, a surprising amount of length, and he's very smart positionally as well. I think this is the year where he took the step forward to more Mikhail Bridges territory defensively. And I think there's a lot, and I think there's a lot for him to unlock yet offensively as well, but defensively, he's starting to piece things together. Uh, and you can tell with his positioning, his timing, his shot blocking around the rim, his shot blocking on the perimeter as well, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. He's been fantastic this season. And to be honest, he's one of the most fun players to watch from a highlight perspective, but also he's taken that big step forward uh, as an on-ball defender, a guy who can sit down in a stance and, and really keep guys in front of him, which has been really vital this year for Minnesota. You think about Minnesota's injuries, Gobert's been in and out of the lineup quite a bit this season. You think about a guy like Cad who's missed, you know, pretty much 70, 80% of the season. Obviously a big shakeup trading D'Angelo Russell. The team's had a lot of moving pieces. Jaden McDaniels and Anthony Edwards have really been the two mainstay constants for that team. And without their inputs, specifically Ant offensively and McDaniels defensively, this team would be a team really on the outside looking in when it comes to the play and race. But with their consistency, their impact on the game, their impact on winning, They've been able to stay afloat, stay around that 500 mark, which I know feels disappointing, but not very many teams could withstand an all-NBA level player missing about 70, 80% of the season like Cat did this year. Uh, this Minnesota team is still pretty talented. Obviously, you know, you question about how is Cat and Gobert going to fit? Are they going to ever figure things out long-term? I think those are all fair, but you can't discredit Jaden McDaniel's impact on this team this season and how well he's played. Defensively, I mean, look at the highlights that you're seeing, right? And then we go into versatility. And this is one of my favorite numbers on Jaden McDaniels. Bull Bull at the beginning of the year was basically breaking the internet for Orlando, blocking a ton of three-point shots and, and just making some crazy plays in transition. And deservedly so. Some of the things Bull Bull does, you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine any other player doing that other than Victor Wembanyama next year. But... In reality, Bull Bull this season has blocked about 15 shots uh, from behind the three-point line, which is a very impressive number, don't get me wrong. And it leads the league. In the NBA, Bull Bull leads the NBA in three-point block shots, which is incredible. But Bull Bull doesn't sit down in a stance. He's not tasked with guarding the best player every night, like Jaden McDaniels is, and he's found a ton of success doing that this year. He's six foot ten and he's typically asked to guard the other team's main ball handler. Some nights that might be Luka Doncic. Some nights that might be someone like Damian Lillard. When they play Sacramento, he has found success guarding De'Aaron Fox, who's probably the fastest player in the league with the ball in his hands. And a, a lengthy six foot ten Jade McDaniels is able to stay in front of these guys. And oh, by the way, he's also blocked eight three point shots of his own, which brings me back to some of that bull bull number. Uh, where, yes, Bull Bull's blocking a ton of three-point shots. So is Jaden McDaniels, but he's doing it in a more key, determinant role when it comes to team defense and winning. And if you want to go back to why Jaden McDaniels is so important for Minnesota and why they're such a bad defensive team without him and a pretty solid defensive team with him, the whole reason why is because Jaden McDaniels is their best on-ball defender. He is their second-best help defender behind Rudy Gobert. And when you put those things together, he's somebody you can't afford to play without because he's your game plan for slowing down the other team's best player on the ball. But he's also your go-to guy when Rudy Gobert is off the floor as a help defender, a rotation guy. You know, the low man, a lot of teams would probably call that. He's so versatile. You can't really name a ton of players in the NBA that you'd say, well, this is the guy I want guarding the point guard when he brings the ball up. Oh, and by the way, I also want him being a rotation shot blocker protecting the rim. You know, at times Kevin Durant's done that in his career. Obviously Giannis, when he's won Defensive Player of the Year, deserves some love like that. Marcus Smart has a very special knack for that as well. He makes some timely plays. My whole point though is 
I'm comparing him to a lot of guys have, who have either won Defensive Player of the Year or have been in strong consideration for all defense before. And Jaden McDaniels needs to be an all defensive team member. Again, look at the versatility. Look at the clips I'm showing you here. There's just so many things that he can do on that end of the court that is very, very special. You're, you're seeing the block three-point shots. You're seeing protecting the rim, being a big-time vertical defensive shot blocker around the rim, being someone who gets in the passing lanes, disrupts guys, picks up 94 feet. He does it all, right? So Jaden McDaniels, I think, is someone who needs a lot of love, deserves a lot of love, uh, and should be getting that right now from voters when it comes to all defense this year. And then the seatbelt component, which is what really excites me about his development as a player in his third year in the league. And I was skeptical on this. Remember, I talked about this in the open. Was I certain Jaden McDaniels was going to take that next step forward from being a fun defensive playmaker who makes some awesome plays and puts together an awesome highlight reel? And is he going to take that next step forward to being someone who's going to consistently sit in the stands, keep guys in front of him, and that's why I'm affectionately calling him a seatbelt because he's got guys strapped up sometimes and they can't get by him. He does a very good job using his length and his ability to move his feet and hips to cut guys off. And for somebody who's as athletic as he is and has such a great highlight reel like he does, he's not overly reliant on his athleticism and he doesn't put himself in bad positions with over anticipation, over eagerness to block shots. And that's really the most impressive thing for me about him. You, you see, he doesn't bite on up fakes. He doesn't put himself in a bad situation very often by reaching, putting himself out of position. He just doesn't do those things. And it's very impressive for me watching Jaden McDaniels. I've watched him so closely this season. And just his, his ability, his willingness to stay down in that stance and to cut guys off. I, I know I keep repeating myself, but this, it's just the most important fundamental thing of individual perimeter defense. And he's become exceptional at it. He's timely when it comes to playmaking. He still has that element in the game. He still has got some of the best blocks in the NBA in terms of a highlight reel montage, but he's figured out how to defend without fouling, how to put himself in a spot where he's going to be able to play 30 to 35 minutes when it really matters. And he's going to challenge the best players. Luka Doncic has historically struggled against Minnesota with the way that they, first of all, stack on the pick and roll and look to blitz him. But Jaden McDaniel's willingness and ability one-on-one -on -one to stay in front of Luka, play physically with him, challenge perimeter shots, and even force some air balls I mean, Jaden McDaniels is such a fantastic player. Uh, he's a real joy to watch. If you haven't had the chance to watch him in person, I really recommend doing that. I've watched him in person a ton of times. Uh, and he's somebody that once you watch in person, you're going to really get a, a good understanding of how talented this guy is on the defensive end of the floor. Plus, you'll see some pretty good offensive basketball from him as well. Uh, again, I, this is just a player who I think needs to be all defense this year. There's a lot of really good candidates for sure. Uh, but Jaden McDaniels is somebody who really deserves that honor, that, um, you know, a little bit of an accomplishment accolade to their name. Uh, Jaden McDaniels has taken so many good steps forward in his NBA development since being drafted 28th overall out of Washington by Minnesota a few years back. Uh, and he's somebody who I, th I think as long as he keeps playing as well as he has, uh, he's going to be someone who maybe has a Mikhail Bridges type trajectory to their career where there's more things he can do on offense. I really believe that while still being a great perimeter lockdown defender. Uh, and McDaniels is probably one of the most fun players to watch in the league, in my opinion, on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, and he's starting to put things all together, which is very awesome. And someone who's very deserving of that all NBA or all defense, excuse me, that all defense uh, accomplishment. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the very next utility sports video.